Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all Denarians on the go and in the know. Please hit the like subscribe button and share with your fellow Denarian friends to help support our channel. Pick up your copy of the Currency Exchange Planner below, voted the number one pre and post RV planning tool for the Dinar community. You will have the planner not only on your desktop computer at home, but also have the Currency Exchange Planner app on your phone at exchange for free. You will have everything right in your hand you will need to safeguard your exchange. The banks are counting on you coming in emotional and in disarray to pull the wool over your eyes and take advantage of you. I always say it is better to be overprepared than not, also you will sleep well at night and have extra peace of mind knowing if the IRS comes knocking at your door, you will have all pre and post RV documentation needed on hand when they request it, and they will, as you will have deep pockets at the point and Uncle Sam will be wanting everything they can get their hands on. Get your copy below, in the description today. I also highly recommend you register with the Carrot Bar Savings Program, if you have not checked it out yet, now is the time to get involved so your money is protected from the pending upcoming financial crash, it's free to register and you will be ahead of everyone else as de-dollarization occurs and everyone else loses their hard-earned cash in the banks. Get yourself registered today, and be a part of the savings team of tomorrow. Make sure you don't lose everything in your regular bank accounts owned by the crooks that don't care about you only your money. Do you really think they just let your cash sit in a vault until you come pick it up again? Once you deposit it in the banks, it is now their money not yours. The Carrot Bar program is the true future of money. It is a gold savings program that takes the blockchain technology to the next level to protect your savings in gold. The gold is sold in small increments of a gram so it is affordable for everyone. Gold is literally the ultimate hedge against a market crash. You have the opportunity of a lifetime to get in on the ground floor of this program, do yourself a favor and start backing your hard-earned cash with gold. The Carrot Bar program and the Currency Exchange Planner work hand-in-hand -hand with each other in protecting your family's finances. Get set up today, before it is too late. The link to the Carrot Bar Savings Program and the Currency Exchange Planner are in the description drop down below. I encourage you, knowledge is power. Stay informed and stay alert. Get involved in both of these programs today. First article of interest for today. This is big news from the CBI. The post below was on dinner recaps and I attached the link and the full intel for everyone's reference. I was first alerted to this news by my friend. Mike aka, the Denarian. He's always on top of all the Iraq news and usually sends me anything that stands out. And this post definitely stands out. I will continue my perspective on it, below the post. I posted this link in the description box below this video. Walking stick, the CBI has told us that all banks in Iraq are going to receive the 50,000 and the 100,000 freshly printed bills. The reason for it is because the CBI is now lessening the amount of 10k and 25k notes in the inventory of Iraqi banks. They want to get more of the three zeros. The CBI is sending 50k and 100k notes only to be used from bank to a bank. Each bank is getting a different specific amount. Each bank must send to the CBI in return either for 25k notes or 10 10k notes. We, Walking Sticks Firm have not received them yet. Some banks have. We believe we will be next. They are only to be used from bank to bank not for circulation. The 50k and 100k are not to be introduced to the citizens. They are to introduce the small category notes when told on their schedule. This is being used to remove the three zeros notes from the banks not to draw them in. That was already done. Okay, here we go. There are many aspects of this post but what particularly interests me is the 50,000 and 100,000 being used for bank to bank transactions. Let me give you an example, here is a picture of a 1934 100,000 US dollar Federal Reserve Gold Certificate banknote. For many, you probably didn't know the US had a 100,000 banknote. Well they did. The $100,000 and 0 cents gold certificate was used for bank-to-bank -bank transactions, 
and was never intended to be held by the public nor was it legal for an individual to own one. This $100,000 and zero cents is a Series 1934. All Series 1934 gold certificates were issued only to banks and were not available to the public. The Series 1934 gold certificates are also distinguished from the previous gold certificates and their gold clause, which adds the phrase, as authorized by law, to denote that these notes cannot be legally held by private individuals. The total print run for the original $100,000.00 gold certificate was 42,000 pieces, all but a few of them have been destroyed. Only a few specimens of these series 1934 gold certificates survive today, in the Smithsonian and Federal Reserve Bank Museums. I am a numismatist and collecting banknotes and coins has been a hobby of mine since 1995, so this is where I was first introduced to these large banknotes. Alright, so now let me explain why this is significant in relation to the above intel from Walking Stick. These US 100,000 notes were only used for transactions between banks. Today, transactions between bank to bank are generally settled digitally, so these large denomination notes are obsolete. However, in some countries transactions between banks are still being practiced using notes, as in our case, of Iraq. What is important to understand and realize is only very large denomination size notes are used to settle bank-to-bank -bank transactions. Now getting back to Iraq, we know that the 50,000 dinar note was introduced in 2015 and was introduced at the public level. Since then the CBI has been pulling these notes from the streets and what got me very excited in walking sticks intel is that these notes along with the 100,000 notes will be used for bank-to-bank -bank only transactions. So if we apply a little logical reasoning, we can ask, how can the 50,000 note, used by the general public one moment and be used through bank-to-bank -bank transactions, the next moment, especially when I said, only very large denomination size notes are used between bank-to-bank, -bank. particularity when the value has not changed yet, at the present rate of 0 0.0008, Iraq would have to use even larger size notes, something like a 1 million dinar note but they are not. It was stated that they will use the 50,000 and 100,000 notes, so in order for this to happen they must raise the value of the dinar by reinstating it to $4. So, let me just clarify my point, it is illogical that the 50,000 note at present value be used to handle banks very large settlements, there has to be a sizable or substantial gap variation for it to make sense. For example in the case of the 1934 $100,000 note used for bank-to-bank -bank settlements, at the time the highest denomination for the public was $1,000. Therefore a note size of $100,000 worked well. In the present case of Iraq the highest note size for the public is 50000 so how can they use the same size to settle bank-to-bank -bank transactions? This is where it is not logical. There is a missing factor here and that is the rate. The rate must be increased for it to be practical and by the sounds of it, it may be sooner than we think. So I hope that starts to excite you. Now the other thing that got me very excited about this intel is that during the years, we have learned that the project to remove the three zeros has been to remove the large notes from circulation or from the hands of the citizens. And we have been told that 90% of the notes, inside Iraq, have been removed from circulation. This was confirmed again by Walking Stick when he said, that was already done. So it seems that the remaining 10,000 and 25,000 notes are in the banks. So, again, applying my sense of logic to this, it would appear the CBI is trading the 50,000 and 100,000 notes for the bank's 10,000 and 25,000 notes at the same value. Swap for swap a dinar for a dinar. Therefore, in the bank's hands are 50,000 and 100,000 notes. But these notes are restricted for bank-to-bank -bank settlements only. You can see where this will start to become a problem, when the citizens come into the bank asking for withdrawals and banks say, sorry we have no money to give you. Panics will start and a whole new wave of issues will give rise. The citizens will start accusing the banks of cheating and fraud and the confidence level of the citizens to the banks will change in an instance.
the CBI will need to act quickly to raise the value of the dinar so as to prevent a bad situation to get more worst. I believe the CBI already has a time frame for collecting the remaining 10,000 and 25,000 notes from the banks and once the notes are back at the CBI, then presto the CBI will are either dinar and we will see the largest denomination size of the Iraq dinar go to 1,000 diners, and the 50,000 and 100,000 notes will become the logical choice for bank-to-bank -bank transactions. Just an FYI side note here, as I am sure many people do not know this fact, but in Kuwait, did you know that the highest bank note size is 20 dinar? That is one powerful currency. So for Iraq and Iran, once they increase in value and things start to stabilize in country, in time they will follow sweet to Kuwait and you'll see them start dropping the 1000 notes, then 500, then the 150. Now back to our logic flow and here's a new thought for you. We can conclude that a current the 50,000 IQD note can still be used for public transactions, since we have not seen any official announcements from the CBI that cancels the 50,000 note from the public and that they will officially be used for bank-to-bank -bank transactions. Once the value is raised, we may then see an announcement from the CBI. From the standpoint of the CBI, they need to remove the last bit of 10k and 25k notes from the banks because if they were to RI the dinar now, before removing the notes, some of the bank employees through temptation, may steal the notes and run over the border to exchange them. Now, the 50,000 may become a question mark. How will the CBI handle this note? As it is now, the 50k notes are meant for public usage, and if these notes are still in the banks when they are I, then the same bank employees may try to steal them and run over the border for exchanging. So it means to me, that the employees will either steal the 10k, 25k or 50k notes. If that's the case, then once the CBI does the RI to $4, they will immediately have to cancel the 50k notes, for public level, to prevent the bank employees from stealing the notes. If the 50k is only designated as bank to bank, then even if they were to steal the notes, they won't be able to exchange it in any country of the world but through an Iraqi bank to an Iraqi bank. So it would be a futile thought on the bank employee to steal. So what this means, is that if anyone is holding the 50,000 IQD note now, do you need to be worried that you may not be able to get the chance to exchange it? I think the CBI may do a second scenario on the 50,000 note and that is to make a new version of the note that would be intended for bank-to-bank -bank transactions. Therefore, there would be two editions of the 50,000 note. The current one that was printed in 2015 and a new one for bank-to-bank. -bank. If the CBI does this, then it'll be a sign of relief for anyone holding the current 50,000 note. I believe this would be the choice as most of the 50,000 notes the CBI printed in 2015 should have already been collected from local circulation. Since Walking Stick said, the CBI has told us that all banks in Iraq are going to receive the 50,000 and the 100,000 freshly printed bills. Freshly printed bills are the key words and this tells me that the CBI will in fact print, or have already printed, a new version of the 50,000 note. This means that 10,000, 25,000 and current 50,000 notes will all be exchangeable, let's hope so, as I also have a few of the 50,000 IQD notes. So aside from the matter on the 50,000 note, I believe that it's time to get our plans in order and be ready. It looks like the CBI will be ready to pull the trigger once they collect the remaining few of 10,000 and 25,000 notes, which should not take long, as Walking Stick stated. Some banks have the 50k and 100k notes already. If you still need help on your currency planning, please consider using my currency exchange planner. I remind you that 85% of the Kuwaiti RI millionaires were flat broke in 5 months. So if you wish to be part of the 15% then make sure your plans are solid. I have a current promotion on my planner software and that is, buy the desktop version and get the mobile app version for free. This is a limited time offer as I may stop this promotion at any time. So I hope my article has lifted your spirits after the stressful few days of the iran USA conflicts and I really believe that we are back on track and the RI is nearer to us now than ever before.
Just a shout out to the Denarian from the Denarian YouTube channel for alerting me to this intel and thanks for dinner recaps for everything you guys are doing and a special thanks to Walking Stick, Frank and Delta for bringing us Iraq news in real time. Thank you. Muhammad Ali. www.currencyachangelander.com How about that guys, the Denarian finally made the news. A special shout out back at you Muhammad, for a great article and analysis of Walking Stick's post. Very well done sir. Next article of interest for today. The central bank sets the price of the dollar and reassures citizens. The Iraqi central bank set the exchange rate of the dollar in local markets after its rise locally due to the crisis and the military escalation between Iran and America. The central bank attributed the reasons for the recent rise in the exchange rate of the U.S. dollar against the Iraqi dinar to the increased demand for the dollar due to rumors that circulated in the markets about the possibility of the outbreak of a future war in light of the tension in the region. The bank's director in Basra, Qasim Rahif, said in a press statement that the increased demand for the dollar contributed to the rise in prices against the limited supply, stressing that the rise did not come through systematic policies, but rather through rumors. Rahif added that the price of buying and selling relative to the dollar is between 122 to 123,000 Iraqi dinars for the $100 class paper, while reassuring citizens in the province that the central bank controls the dollar prices while calling on citizens not to be afraid of the rise in its price. He pointed out that this rise will disappear in light of the bank's offer of this currency and its pumping, indicating that more than $150 million are being pumped into the markets daily in general in Iraq to control the sale and purchase of the currency. It is noteworthy that the price of the dollar rose from 1,200 dinars two days ago to 1,230 dinars today, which is a significant increase during a short period of time. This rise coincided with the heightened tension between Washington and Tehran in the wake of the assassination of the Quds Force commander Qasem Soleimani with an American strike in Iraq last Friday. Next article of interest. Parliamentary economy. Iraqi dollars are smuggled out of the country through fake companies and connections. The Parliamentary Economy and Investment Committee confirmed on Friday that the central bank sells large amounts of dollars per day in order to control the exchange rate, pointing out that the dollar is fleeing the country through companies and fake connections. Committee member Nada Shaker said in a statement to Information, that the central bank possesses large stores of dollars and sells huge amounts of currency daily despite the current state of tension in the country. She added that the high dollar exchange rate in the local markets does not have any justification, especially as the central bank controls the sale of the dollar. She indicated that the financial market of the central bank sells large amounts of dollars daily, but these funds fall within the category of corruption, as there are many fictitious receipts in companies that do not exist, and therefore there is a leak in smuggling of hard currency outside the country. Next article of interest. The Finance Committee reveals the mechanism for paying Iraqi debts. And the Central reveals its policy to control the exchange rate. The Parliamentary Finance Committee announced, Thursday, January 9, 2020, a discussion of the mechanisms that must be followed to preserve Iraqi money, pay debts and the financial situation in light of the tension in the region, during its hosting of the Governor of the Central Bank and the Ministry of Finance and the head of the Financial Supervision Bureau. A statement to the committee said that it hosted the Governor of the Central Bank, the head of the Financial Supervision Bureau, the Director General of the Budget Department in the Ministry of Finance and the Assistant Director General of the Iraqi Trade Bank, TBI. To discuss the current events in light of the military escalation taking place in the region and its effects on the financial situation of the country and the monetary policy that must be followed to control the exchange rate of the currency in the Iraqi market. The statement added, the Finance Committee heard the guests' presentation after they provided a detailed explanation of the mechanisms that must be followed to preserve Iraqi money inside and outside Iraq. He continued. The governor of the central bank indicated that Iraq's debts were scheduled and paid at the specified times, stressing at the same time that the political positions of Iraq affect 
of course, its financial position, whether negatively or positively, and that follows the type of position and the consequent reaction. The Finance Committee confirmed at the conclusion of the statement, it seeks to permanently stave off danger from Iraqi money and correct the course of its monetary policy in light of the tension in the region and spare the country to fall into a deadlock that negatively affects its economy and development. Next article of interest. Hackers zap official Iraqi websites with cyber attacks. Electronic hacking operations against Iraqi institutional websites have sabotaged the Prime Minister's page and those of various governmental, ministerial and security agencies. Hack attacks are growing at the speed of 5G across the globe, and Iraq has been hard hit lately. The official website of controversial Iraqi Shiite cleric Muqtada al-Sadr was hacked January. Sixth after he called for his followers to activate the Mahdi army to fight U.S. troops. His call followed the U.S. assassination of top Iranian military commander Qasem Soleimani and the deputy head of the Popular Mobilization Units, PMU, Abu Mahdi al muhandis The hackers put Iraqi U.S. flags on the homepage, writing, Iran no more. That intrusion came just weeks after several other attacks on official Iraqi websites, including the Prime Minister's. A hacker hit the sites of various Iraqi government committees December 18. Using a Twitter account under the name M4X per zero, the hacker claimed to have retrieved 15 gigabytes of emails from the Ministry of Oil, 8 gigabytes from the Ministry of Defense and 17 gigabytes from the Ministry of Interior. The hacker also infiltrated the sites of the Ministries of Health, Education and Trade. Before deleting his account, the thief expressed determination to publish sensitive information and messages. Though some electronic breaches are accomplished simply for technical bragging rights among hackers, many are being made to steal information or influence security and the political situation. On November 25 on the Iraqi Counterterrorism Service website, a statement was posted declaring a military coup in support of the protests that have been underway in Iraq since the beginning of October. After 25 minutes, the service clarified the statement was due to a hack. On November 18, anonymous hackers breached the website of the Ministry of Communications. They wrote on the homepage, closed by the people martyrdom or victory needed. The message was one of solidarity with the protesters. Such attacks aren't the exception, but rather seem systematic. Over the years, Iraqi government sites have been hacked repeatedly. In October 2016, a Saudi hacker managed to break into the official Ministry of Foreign Affairs website. The trespasser published on the homepage the slogan of the Saudi Kingdom, along with a threat. In May 2017, the website of the Iraqi National Security Council was breached a few hours after bombs exploded in the capital, Baghdad. The recent repeated breaches have triggered criticism and complaints. Strategic expert Munkif Dagger said he doubted the Iraqi government's ability to secure its websites. He explored the political dimension and asked, how could the government then protect its people? Authorities outline various motivations behind hacking. Minister of the National Alliance Ali Albury told Al Monitor, there are two reasons why government websites are hacked. The first is stealing information to blackmail ministries and leaders and send information to external enemies of Iraq. The second reason is corruption within ministries and institutions that deal with companies having foreign ties that leak information and allow hacking and piracy. Isan Al Shamari, head of the Iraqi Center for Political Thought, told Al Monitor that recurrent hacking operations on ministry websites are a challenge to sensitive ministries and institutions, and prove the inability to maintain sufficient digital security. He added, the government and official institutions pay little attention to cyber security, and they employ traditional and inefficient security technology despite the large amounts of money spent on this issue. Though some reports show that hacking such websites is a form of political rivalry among Iraqi parties, Shamari rejected the idea that hacking is being used for political sabotage. This is part of the struggle between protesters and the government, he said. The Digital Media Center issued a statement September 
28 blaming Iraqi institutions for neglecting cybersecurity. The report stated, the breaches prove that Iraq has no clear strategy for cybersecurity, especially since some websites are linked to national security and should supposedly be extremely secure. When Al Monitor asked about the negligence accusations, the Iraqi Ministry of Communications responded, there are security protocols in place to protect privacy, and the information system employs measures to secure data online. The ministry also mentioned that privacy is maintained through encryption of messages using secure protocols which limit accessibility to shared data, and it confirmed, the technology to protect data from sabotage by hackers is there. Former judge and legal expert Ali Al-Tamimi told Al-Monitor, hacking sabotage is the country's national interest. The security apparatus has to launch an investigation into this issue. The parliament has to also hold the different actors accountable as well as the institutions that have been breached and find out who is involved. It appears that foreign actors are involved and some people have accepted bribes for cooperating with such actors, especially since the breaches are recurring without any investigation. Parliament member Fallow al Faji told Al Monitor some progress is being made. The parliament is moving toward discussing the issue of breaches now that it has become clear that they are systematic and directly affect citizens' security and data, Kafaji said. A member of the Parliamentary Council of Representatives, Siam Al Musawi, expressed another take on the matter. She told the media December 18 that she agrees hacking operations are unacceptable if they seek to discredit and overthrow public figures but they can serve a legitimate purpose if they aim to uncover corruption. Please hit the like and subscribe to be alerted as more articles of interest unfold. Be sure to visit the Denarian blog and find me on Facebook, so you get the news in real time as it breaks throughout the day. Download your copy of the Currency Exchange Planner right now, the number one tool made by Denarians for Denarians. Check it out today, the link is in the description below gain the upper hand, that the banks don't want you to have. They are counting on you to come in confused, in disarray and not organized. With the currency exchange planner on your side, the banks don't have a chance at pulling the wool over your eyes. Also, get on board the blockchain gold savings carrot bar program today, you don't have to wait until you're filthy rich to get involved. It's free to join, and the program was made so anyone can save in gold and avoid the repercussions of the possible upcoming market crash, one of the true forms of money away from the fiat system, gold. Protect your family's wealth today. I would not recommend something I do not stand behind and believe in 110%. Did you ever hear the term, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink? The links are in the description below. Get involved now. Knowledge is power. Over and out for now. The Denarian.